Those Were the Days is filmed before a live internet audience. And welcome into Those Were the Days. It's Those Were the Days, the show where we talk about classic television through a modern lens, but with nostalgic eyes. Um, we are wrapping up musical March while being a week into April, but that's fine. Don't worry about that. Um, but it is musical March and we are wrapping things up with uh, a little show. Uh, so before we can talk about that, though, I need some help talking about this. All right. Um, I've got a master of geography, Audie. Okay. Why is it so good? So difficult to find good lady type stuntmen to do these jobs. Hi, yes, we wanted to hire you as a stunt person for the next episode. It's a musical episode, but we've got some exciting bits. Yes, I've got a list right here of everything that we need you to do. Yeah, you, you'll be tied by your ankles from a lasso and dragged by a horse. It's going to be great. You'll be dragged through all kinds of stuff. Grass, gravel, road, some fire. I think that'll be some kind of special effects uh, and a river stream right exciting then you'll wake up well the actress and then as her you'll go over a cliff into some water how does that sound oh anything else let's see uh i guess you'll get pulled underwater nude for a bit <laughs> what's that yes yes nude completely naked top and bottom front yes it'll be fine your hair will cover any uh, hello <laughs> hello <laughs> sheesh that's the third one today every time i get to the naked part <laughs> We also have an Amazon warrior, Stephen. Perfect. And from the land of Illusia, it's Amy. In 2019, I had pneumonia. Um, I had just had my wisdom teeth out about a month before, and so I wound up on two courses of antibiotics in order to fight the pneumonia. So I was sleeping on the couch, and at about 3 a.m. with my fever somewhere in the 102 range, I woke up and yelled at the television that I wanted to watch The Bear Show. That experience is not unlike watching this episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Uh, so if you haven't figured it out by now, the show that we watched this week to end Musical March was Xena, Warrior Princess. Specifically, Season 3, Episode 12, The Bittersweet, which was the first of a couple of musical episodes that they did for this show. Um. So before I dive too much into it, uh, I want to know any history any of y'all had with uh, Xena, Warrior Princess. I'm going to start with Steven. It's hard to miss Xena uh, in the mid to late 90s. Like, it's just a thing. Everybody talked about it. Uh, I was on, I saw commercials all the time. I knew what it was. We just, we weren't a family that watched, you know, Period fantasy, uh, like like Xena. We were watching Walker Texas Ranger probably at the time that Xena was airing. So I never, I just missed it. Uh, I, it wasn't a part of my life, but I, man, I was very familiar with it because Entertainment Tonight loved talking about Lucy Lawless all the time. Uh, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I think it's just because she was tough, and we didn't have tough women at the time. Like we'd been since Wonder Woman, you know, we'd probably had like that archetype. Uh, so it, it was, you know. I was very aware. I just never watched it. This was a this was a fun watch. Thanks for bringing it my way, Travis. Yeah, Audie, how about you? Okay, so I had never actually watched a full episode of Xena, but I was well aware of it. Now this may be stepping on your toes about where the origin comes from, but I know Xena comes from Hercules. I watched mm -hmm. Hercules. Hercules was a series that came from TV movies from Universal called the Action Pack. And I remember watching those because there was another of those series of movies to TV show that I watched called Vanishing Sun. And I was all about that freaking series. If you don't know what it's about, it's kind of a renegade meets Kung Fu. And if you know those two references, you're a very cool person. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Yeah. Um, I've never seen that show, but I know those references, so I got an idea of what it was. Um, Amy, how about you? What history do you have with Xena? Um, my history with Xena mostly revolves around Lucy Lawless handing Kevin Sorbo his ass on Twitter. Like that's about <laughs> that's about the extent of it. Amen. Really. <laughs> that's that's I mean, about but... as far as we go. I mean, I'm like I'm aware in a cultural sort of way. But... Sure. Mm -hmm. I, this was the first episode I ever watched. A heck of a choice. Again, amen. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so much like uh, the three of you, I knew of Xena. Um, I saw, I know I saw at least one of the Hercules TV movies, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure, and maybe an episode here or there. Um, but I never watched episodes of Xena Warrior Princess, but you couldn't escape. Like it just existed. Wait, and, Travis, you haven't seen? I know. <laughs> um, but I knew of it. And so when uh, when we started talking about, well, let's do musical episodes, I'm like, all right, what are we going to do? So I start looking around and I'm thinking, oh, the monkeys would be great. But then Amy talks about doing the monkeys. OK, won't do the monkeys. And I'm thinking about um, and then I thought, oh, there was that Buffy episode once more with feeling. That's a musical episode. And I looked like that would fit. But then I looked a little deeper and I saw this one and I thought, no, this is a perfect opportunity because um as we'll get into this actually influenced a lot of that so so xena warrior princess spun off of hercules the legendary journeys um and it ran from 1995 until 2001 uh comprising 134 episodes it actually um was a bigger ratings and uh longer lasting series than hercules than the series that it spun out of See, she um, was already giving it to Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> she was, even back then. Yeah, that doesn't shock uh, me either what, because I remember Xena, but I thought Hercules spun off of Xena. I didn't remember it the way that it happened. <laughs> well, what's cool is this actually could have fit in several categories we've talked about doing. Um, we've t we've talked in the past about doing backdoor pilots, yep. um, mm -hmm. which is the, mm -hmm. the process of, you know, introducing a character in one series and letting that be your pilot. They did that. There was a three-episode arc in... Uh, Hercules that introduced Xena and then they spun the series out of that um, or a spinoff, just, just a straight spinoff. But this was a lot more fun of an episode, I think, to start with uh, for it, <laughs> oh, it was uh, for all of us to have our first one. So 95 to 2001, 134 episodes created by um, Bob Tappert and uh, RJ Stewart and Sam Raimi. Mm -hmm. Sam Raimi was involved in the creation and production of this Um we saw his brother in here. We'll talk about. Yeah. But um, it was an American production. Bob Tappert and uh, R.J. Stewart kind of came up with it, the idea of it. And um, but they shot everything in New Zealand, so it was all shot sure in New Zealand, and it was mostly a New Zealand cast. Um, it does star. So Lucy Lawless ended up getting cast as Xena, who is a. She was kind of a warlord, and from what I understand, having not watched much of the show, she did a lot of like a lot of not great stuff in her past. And now she's trying to atone for all of that by defending the weak um, and using her skills for that. So her and her friend, um, Gabrielle, they're basically the two main characters. And then it's just sort of an interchanging roaming cast uh, of, of people. Um, and a lot of it was just standalone episodes. They didn't have a lot of like overarching story arcs. This was, Apparently, one of the few episodes that even brought stuff from previous episodes into it, because when this one started off, we got a previously on Xena. We sure did. Thing. We got yeah, a we lot did, yeah. of like previously on the last eight seasons of Xena. Yeah, was... I was gonna say a previously <laughs> on didn't help. At no, all. It, I was not helped no. by the. Previous. It was just like I here's like, an information. Oh dump no, yeah. <laughs> what? We did get what? some. I... We got some Don Lafontaine though. Uh, I don't know if you guys. <laughs> oh boy, did we! I mm -hmm. did. Yeah. And I freaking love Don LaFontaine. <laughs> yeah. So when he's yeah. doing the opening narration for this series, I was like, oh, yes. Um, yeah, I feel like we could have gotten a lot more out of this episode if we had any history whatsoever with Xena. Um, there's a lot <laughs> yeah. of to, you know, I Amy, I'm going to steal. I'm going to steal something from you. Um, which is you sort of jumping in on this episode, you feel like a college freshman walking into the wrong lecture. Yeah. You sit down sure. and you <laughs> just like 
everything's oh, going on around no. you. You're like, I don't know what's happening, but it's really cool. <laughs> so you just sort of get swept up by it. And then you're like, I don't know what I, I just I need to transfer out of this. I'm going to fail. I can't. <laughs> this, is not, this is not where I parked my car. <laughs> um, so this particular episode, season three, episode 12, The Bittersweet, they decided to make a musical episode. This is by a lot of um, accounts, the first sort of non-musical series to do a musical episode. Hmm. So once more with feeling, like th this episode crawled so that that could walk, so that other shows could do that. Um, yeah. And I've seen it in Buffy. I've seen it in The Flash, mm -hmm. uh, in Supergirl on the CW. They did musical episodes. It kind of became a thing, um, even if your show wasn't based around music. And a lot of it came from this. They just had an idea. Hey, let's let's just do a Broadway style musical. I'm like, wild. why not? Yeah. Okay, wild. sure. And I mean, the show the actors come from musical backgrounds, anyways. Yeah. Like, you know, a lot of them yeah. are musical nuts and yeah. getting into acting in this way or that. So, yeah. And I didn't mention uh, Gabrielle is played by um, Renee O'Connor. Those were your mm -hmm. two leads: Lucy Lawless, Renee O'Connor. Um, and I did send you guys a video. I don't know if any of you got a chance to watch it, but if you if you can, there's a video on YouTube of Lucy and Renee watching this episode, and it's great. It's great to just see them sitting there, like years after the fact, looking back on it, because <laughs> it like some of it they don't even remember doing. Some of it isn't even them. Like they talked about. Audie, you brought up in your intro the stunt people. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, that opening fight. So. All right. The plot of this episode is basically in a previous episode. I'll try to make this as succinct as I can. <laughs> Skip forward so, 10 minutes if you're not interested. I'm <laughs> so Xena so finds out she has a son. Gabrielle has a daughter. Gabrielle's daughter is evil, I guess, or a conduit for evil and kills Xena's son. So now Xena blames Gabrielle for that. Gabrielle is upset with Xena over whatever happened. And Callisto, who is an enemy of some kind, is basically pitting the two of them against each other. Sure. That's about as much as I could figure out. Maybe wrong on that. If you're a Xena warrior princess fan, uh, you can let me know how, how badly I butchered that. But that's basically where we are. So Gabrielle is in some sort of like cleansing ritual hut. Um, and I, I will say, when I first started this this episode for the first time, I wasn't expecting, um, like, fully naked right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. All the, the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of naked in this, um, which just I didn't anticipate that for some reason because it was a cable TV show, I guess. There's lots but, of implied um, nudity. We're not talking this is Game of Thrones. If this was HBO right, right. today, uh, it would have been actual yeah. nudity all day. Right. But this was the 90s, and just this showing your upper thigh was going enough. all the way up to the line. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's that line. I'm touching. I'm touching it. I'm yeah. not touching. I'm touching it. I'm not touching I'm not it. Touching yeah. <laughs> so Gabrielle is in some kind of a cleansing hut, going whatever's going on, and Zena just shows up at the village and just beats the break up, breaks off all the Amazons, just comes mm -hmm. in and just owns house, backflips off her horse. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. While doing it was the so yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, stuff. I rewound it three times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she put some oh. distance on the her and that horse, though. Like, I mean, she jumped really far. Mm -hmm. It was impressive. really yeah, far did. off that horse. Uh -huh. Um, and then Joxer is trying to get Gabrielle out of there. Joxer, played by Ted Raimi, uh, which I was kind of glad he was. I was glad that this was an episode with Ted Raimi in it. Mm -hmm. Can, we, we don't get a lot of crossover stuff on on our podcast this, this is the second time we've seen him it is where was that we've seen time? ted Raimi a couple times he um was in sequest yeah oh snap yeah. that's right mm -hmm. ah, look at that which would have been around this time maybe a couple years mm -hmm. earlier mm -hmm. so yeah something but close. he plays he plays joxer in this he was in about 40 something 43 episodes so mm -hmm. he was one of the the more uh prominent guest stars they had um so he's trying to get Gabrielle out of there, and Xena basically stops them, knocks him out, and then gets Gabrielle whipped around the ankles and ties her to a horse and drags her for ever. Yeah, that um, girl's dead. I don't know what so dead. world they're living in. Big time. She's mega dead, like dead four times. 
<laughs> like, mm-hmm. let me take um, you through this obstacle. Let me take yeah. you through this obstacle. He hit a big rock what, at what one I... point. It would fly it in the camera. I'm like that girl <laughs> the is uh-huh. the deadest. Yeah. <laughs> and that that uh, that rock or tree stump or whatever it was that she hit was such great, like late '90s CGI. <laughs> oh, yeah. so All of the special the effects. The rock, yeah. The rock, and then getting up to where we're coming to next. I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> well, and not we only that, but really hard. It mm-hmm. was very obviously a stunt man getting dragged behind that horse. Yeah. And in some of those wide shots, you could see because, mm-hmm. like, the stunt guy was considerably more well built than <laughs> yeah. Like, just mm-hmm. big, bulky arms getting dragged around. It was a different time. Yeah, it was. I feel like I we will didn't say, have though, nearly as many. The fight sequence before that, when Xena first shows up, yeah. all that work with the oh, Amazons yeah. and the stunt work mm-hmm. they were doing, that was really good. Oh, yeah, that was cool. And they oh, even, yeah. they mentioned that in the video I was watching, uh, Lucy Lawless was like, oh, the stunt ladies, the, the stunt women were so good in this. And it's like, and and she kept saying like, it's harder to be, especially at this point, a stunt woman, because they're on this show wearing, you know, leather skirts and Next. crop yeah, tops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. She's like, you can't hide padding anywhere <laughs> yeah. because... You're barely wearing anything, and they got to do all these flips and mm-hmm. stuff. So, um, but Zena takes her to like the edge of a cliff and mm-hmm. picks her up to throw her over the cliff. And I my, did like that was uh, so Ren- good. Mm-hmm. That was my other favorite like <laughs> special good. effect, like seeing the the quote unquote cliff that she was at and the quote unquote waterfall that was coming <laughs> yeah. out of the cliffs, <laughs> yeah. just so, so, from somewhere. Yeah. Okay, so apparently they were at an actual cliff. Because Renee O'Connor talked about being scared out of her mind for that scene, um, that they were at a cliff. Now, how close they got to it, I don't know. But the waterfall right. was very poorly CG'd in there. Oh my gosh! And I liked her. It her probably looked great she... then. <laughs> oh, it was, yeah, it's probably beautiful, and we we probably remember it looking awesome. It's just now with our mature eyes, we're like, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I just liked how when she kicked Xena in the face, her foot came from a really <laughs> wild angle. Like, I don't was, know what. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, it's another part I had to rewind. I was like, hang on. Yeah, where, like, <laughs> what is happening? These physics All don't right. look like they work right. Where did sure. that foot come from? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. given how she was given how she was dragged, her <laughs> leg may not be going in the correct direction anymore. <laughs> That's, a good point. That's, That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> She's got three um, extra knees now. <laughs> So before Xena can throw her over the edge, uh, they have a little tussle, and then they fall over the edge. They fall into the water, and we get very poetic words followed by they end up naked somewhere, and it's the land of illusion. They get and naked. music just they just they just start singing. They get naked and wake up at a rainforest cafe. That's all I could think of whenever <laughs> I saw this. I was like, this a rainforest like the- cafe. With showbiz pizza animals. Yes, this looks like the yes. entire yes. Rainforest oh. Cafe. Oh god! <laughs> I also yeah, love the. Um, I mi- I miss this Disney land in stage. Disney. I didn't I didn't get <laughs> yeah. to this part of the park. It's <laughs> really weird. <laughs> and I I love the come straight out of the water and then you have perfectly dry like blow dried hair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all of that that was great. Like um you know showing your uh, your TV budget. Because those oh, were yeah. uh, clear, very clearly shot on completely different days. Well, we talked about Xena jumping off her horse when Gabrielle just jumps out of the freaking water. I was like, whoa, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's put <laughs> yeah. all those stunt, pe- stunt women to use. Yeah. <laughs> so they're in the land of Illusia. And then we get songs and just all sorts of songs. We go straight oh, Broadway musical, almost opera. Like it's, oh, yeah. it's very, very mm-hmm. close to that. There's very little spoken dialogue throughout most of the rest of this episode. Um, so the music for the entire series was done by Joseph Laduca. And he did this along with a lyricist named Dennis Spiegel, who I think was from Broadway. And they did all the songs for this. And they ended up getting uh, some awards for it. Um, they got nominated for Emmy Awards for the music in this. And I got to say, it's really good. Like, I, I yeah, was pretty it was impressed better, with the music. It's better than I episode. expected it to be. Especially with a TV show that's, you know, cranking out however many episodes in however little amount of time. The fact that they got this made. Right. Because 
Audi, you and I have talked about like syndicated television production schedules when we're when we've talked Highlander on the other show. Mm -hmm. They're doing like three episodes at once where it's like an episode is in pre-production, an episode is shooting, and an episode is in post-production. And they're they're churning them out like every week or two, basically. Yeah. They're going through that cycle. And so they had to write all these songs, they had to rehearse them, they had to rehearse dances. Um, which the dancing between Aries and Lucy. Um, Aries and Xena. Real good. Mm -hmm. So, Kevin Smith played Aries in this series. Not um, that Kevin. Not he that sadly. <laughs> right. I was very disappointed. So was I. I, um, credits, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> that's what I did. And then I was like, people, uh, IMDb. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I was like, that's so not the same fine. Guy. And sadly, um, he passed away in 2001 from an onset accident. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Of some kind. Or uh, 2002, I guess it was. Um, he was only, he was in his late thirties. Mm. Um, but he was very nervous about his scene because Lucy Lawless had uh, tweaked her knee. And so she couldn't rehearse the dancing. Mm. And he was, he was rehearsing with a dance partner who was about a foot shorter than Lucy Lawless. <laughs> oh no. And, uh, but she she healed up in time and they were able to do it and it turned out great. Like I think it oh, yeah. looked. Amazing. I'm a sucker for a good tango. Yeah, his beard. Also that dress great she was too. Wearing. Oh, oh yeah, if you know his beard was fantastic. That... Yeah, it was a chin strap that took a walk. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was. <laughs> it's weird. It was like wearing a surgical mask of hair. Yeah, like, right here. Yeah. <laughs> it was a really fascinating look. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> So, so they basically after this, it is, it is Zena and Gabrielle have to, they go through like this whole thing of they're at odds, but then they have to work together to get out of this place. It's all based mm -hmm. around love and hatred and, and kind of just reconnecting, I guess is basically what's going on. Um, that's kind of it for plot. There's not a lot of plot to discuss. It's just the mm -hmm. music and the, the songs were great. The music, like the, the whole production of it, I, like I found myself just sitting back and enjoying kind of chuckling at certain parts and being like, ah, God, that's just, you know, it's super clever. Um, no idea what was going on for half of it. No. Didn't no. really care. No, I was really Didn't trying really to pick out the, the voices of the singers. Cause like, I know that wasn't Ted Raimi's voice. Like I'm pretty sure that uh, wasn't it him. was, that was, that Ted, was Ramey. Ted Raimi. Yeah, that was him. So right. Ted Raimi sung his own part. Um, Kevin Smith, did his his singing as Aries? He's got a gorgeous voice. Yeah, so I that was I figured he had to have been a different voice because it sounded like Aladdin, like it, almost <laughs> if you were to put his it voice. It felt very Disney. Yes, it yeah. really yeah. did, so like Hunchback of Notre Dame level. You know, we're no, gonna no. put in some stuff that's yeah. a little shade, like a little intense. So yeah. they did they did swap out some of them. Uh, Lucy Lawless also did her own singing. So her, Kevin Smith, Ted Raimi, they sung their their own. Renee O'Connor did not. They they had um, a Broadway trained uh, Susan Wood did the um, parts that would have been uh, Gabrielle. Um, and Renee O'Connor. And they brought in <laughs> <laughs> probably. Um, but they they also brought in like a lot of background singers and dancers for all the because the there were a lot like of. CGI animals that were singing. Oh yeah, yeah. yes. It was a lot. There was a lot like that when they first get there at Lucy Lala and the Wheel of Fate. Yeah, and I'm mm -hmm. like, what? <laughs> in, yeah. What in the fever dream is happening right mm -hmm. now? And so, it was like, wild. It is wild, but also I appreciate that because it gives you. It does not hold back. This is what you're getting. Sit back and enjoy. Like, yeah, you're either going to you're either going to buy into it at that point or you won't. But you don't have to wait long to figure out if this is an episode for you or not. No, this is bonkers those, as it is. This is one of those episodes where I would have loved to sit down in the production meeting of figuring this one out. Yeah. Like, you know, we're a series where we have warrior lady beating up people and then, oh, now we're going to sing. We're going to have animals singing. And I mean, singing. to their credit, at least they were like in another realm mm -hmm. when right, you go sure. like okay. if there are literal gods so you can go mm -hmm. okay uh, all right we're not gonna bring this home and that <laughs> was one good. of the things that i did read about this show was that 
it didn't didn't tie itself too much to any one sort of thing. So like sure. Xena, Her- Hercules is born out of the Greek mythology. And then Xena was a spinoff of that. And it's sort of set in a fantasy version of sort of ancient Greece. But like they they would pull from everything. There were Norse, there were African, Eastern, you know, all sorts of mythologies and deities and whatnot. They didn't really stick to one. Um, so yeah, they would just play fast energy. and loose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, you're right. Like going to the land of Illusia gives them poetic license to just have fun. And yeah. like a copy I, the show didn't... became a Warshak test. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. And like the show never took itself too seriously. I'm pretty sure. Obviously, if you're doing an episode like this, you can't. But mm-hmm. yeah, it was what I remember clips wise that I had seen of Xena was like, it was this show, but it also like was, you know, winking at the camera, a little tongue in cheek, mm-hmm. a little like they would work in sort of modern ish references and stuff or or things of that nature. So it kind of worked. Um, but yeah, I just like it. It was just kind of fun to see going through all of this and having these like Broadway production style musical numbers um, and all of the dancing, all of the choreography. And then you realize, or maybe you don't, and you're like me and you had to read it. Um, all the costuming and the theming is based around the tarot deck. Mm-hmm. Really? So, I didn't know that. Um, yeah. Amy, you probably are the one most um, knowledgeable in the tarot of the four so of us. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I, I didn't notice at the time until I've just pulled up the IMDB plot keywords for this episode, which I have been waiting for a hold to like insert this information in. Cause it's, <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, so there are six of them. Uh, female nudity, okay. Julius Check. Caesar character, Mm-hmm. Dragged behind a horse, <laughs> woman dragged behind a horse, tarot, and musical episode. <laughs> Those are it's good. not helpful, IMDb. None of this is mm-hmm. other than dragged behind horse. Yeah, I want more. That of that. one, I go yes. Mm-hmm. Correct. Female nudity shirt. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. What the? I. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like the wheel of fate. Like that's a thing. Um. Yeah. I. I didn't entirely catch it at all like i'm sure if i went back and get it i mean because the the four suits are cups wands um pentacles and uh swords yeah so yeah so apparently it was the rider uh weight deck is what they were following and you had things like callisto who uh, is the first person that um that xena meets in Illusia. She's the one that kisses Xena and then has the first song. She's dressed as the fool. Yep. Um, Xena's the high priestess. And then you have the wheel. You have the hanged man. Joxer is the hanged man and yeah. the hermit. Joxer. I keep saying Joxter. It's Joxer. <laughs> uh, Gabrielle dresses as, uh, has costumes of the Empress. Um, Xena at one point is dressed as death. Um, they, they, they're in the tower. So they, yeah. I kind of like working that in. I think that's a nice, like, extra layer of something that, when I read about that, I'm like, that's clever. Mm-hmm. Like, like how many got people your... would notice, but you did the work anyway. Right, right, sure. It's one of and those sometimes... things where, like, we don't notice it on the surface, but somebody who knows and understands that season is like, oh wow, y'all really, y'all did. Oh yeah. wow, that's impressive. You it's know? for that person uh, to uh-huh. go and yeah. be like, look at that. Yeah. These guys, they they mm-hmm. worked hard. It's like when, a, when someone I mean, uses actual computer dialogue that makes sense in a sitcom yeah. or something, you're like, yeah. what you're just like, happened? Hang on, what? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, by the way, did you catch the uh, cameo of somebody we all recognize in here? He's Carl got a Urban. He missed the cameo. Baby there you face. Go. Baby mm. Carl Urban. Baby mm. Carl uh, Urban. That's the, uh, by the way, that's the Julius Caesar. Uh, that was Got mentioned it. in the plot oh. keywords. He played yeah. Julius Caesar in this in this series. So he's literally in one shot without a speaking part, mm-hmm. uh, which is crazy to think of Carl Urban as that ever. Yeah. But that was, you know, this was 1998. He wasn't, nobody knew who he was yet. He was just some New Zealand actor. Oh, he is right now. Um, waiting to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I looked at his IMDb. I do kind of know who he is. 
<laughs> fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Um, also, uh, some other actors that were in this, by the way, Bruce Campbell did uh, yeah. did appear in nine oh, yeah. episodes. As, I feel um, like you, I feel like the show wouldn't exist if he didn't. Like, right? There's Raimi. It was the, you have to have say. him. Yeah. Right. You must. Yeah, well, yeah and Bruce Rob, is going to be involved somewhere. Rob Tapert was part of the, all the Sam Raimi stuff too. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. they he, mm -hmm. they were a yeah. they were a production yeah. crew. So they all knew each other. It was probably a simple mm -hmm. call. Hey, Bruce, you got a minute? You want to come to New Zealand? And he was probably shooting Briscoe County Junior during some of this show. Like, I remember that came probably. out way back then. Yeah. He only made it one season. But still, he's probably around. Well, and it's the same character he played in Hercules. So he would just, like, show oh, up for yeah. a few episodes of Hercules. He did the same character here. The other name that I saw in the list that I recognized was Martin Sokas, who was in, like, a dozen episodes or so. He's an actor. You've seen him in things. He was in The Lord of the Rings, but he's also in some other things. I mean, um, every every citizen of New Zealand was yeah, in Lord every, of the Rings. Yeah, every one of them. Mm -hmm. Like, all of it's them. True. That's, that's true. That's <laughs> true. But no, he had, like, an actual speaking part. Sure. Right? Um, but he's been in some other movies and, and television series as well. You'd recognize him if you saw him type of type of person. Um, but yeah, I just... I, this is a fun episode. Um, did any... Okay, Audie, I'm going to start with you. Did you have a song in particular from this that kind of stood out to you more than any of the others? Or were they all sort of on the same level? They were all kind of on the same level. I, the one note that I've made that I want to go back to is when, the, you know, Xena's with uh, Ares and all the killer kind of people. And then Gabrielle's over here. And then they, when they meet, she immediately just goes for her and kills her. And that's when she kills her in this episode. And I'm like, what? dang it and then they reference it and it's like you killed me and Zena's like i didn't kill you i killed an illusion and gabrielle's like and that's better how <laughs> it's a fair point mm -hmm. uh steven how about you did any song stick out to you more than others not not in particular i, I think I it was just more of those moments of me trying to figure out whose voice was whose and swearing up and down <laughs> that guy was singing a whole new world it sounded just like mm. Aladdin. Like, I, yeah, but no, not really. And to be fair, we're shoot we're shooting this episode of our show two weeks after I watched it, so I didn't uh -huh. refresh myself sure very enough. well, and my notes are unclear uh, because <laughs> <No>. <laughs> wow. I don't know. I clearly uh, just enjoyed the music. I didn't really think too hard about it. That's fair, Amy. How about you? Anything? Um, no, it was definitely the tango with uh, Xena and Ares. That was mm -hmm. real good. I'm I'm a yep. sucker for that sort of thing. Anyway, it was really good. That's uh, that good. was the song "Melt Into Me," um, mm. performed by Kevin Smith. And not that, not that one. <laughs> but not that one. Um, <laughs> honestly, for me, the song that stood out the most was the "War and Peace" one that you you mentioned, Audie. Where because I love a song that is like two competing kind of stories being told at the same time mm -hmm. in that Broadway and the, style. That one, I think that one was the most Disney. Like, oh, very much that so. all yeah. the, like, Disney films love that. Mm -hmm. love it that. also had, like, it just had really fun moments, like when uh, when um, Aries starts singing and all the guys in the background are doing the Xena and like, <laughs> coming out from behind their shields to do that, and you had everybody in the village with Gabrielle, including her sister. And what's great is, again, that video of Lucy Lawless and Renee O'Connor. When they get to that song, they brought the actor back that played Gabrielle's sister in the series earlier on. They bring her back for this episode, and both oh, of nice. them are like, oh, she, she's off-key horribly, but in, like, the perfect way. Because <laughs> she was, like, the one who couldn't sing, but they left her voice in. And it just, they're like, it's terrible, but also great. <laughs> and I just I couldn't help but laugh at that. But that whole song uh for me was kind of my favorite one. Um that and the ballad of Joxer the Mighty, because mm -hmm. Joxer had his own theme song. <laughs> yeah. yeah. His own music. Wild. And apparently would sing it like that was a I was reading about it. That was a thing throughout the series. Joxer would have and sing his own theme song of that course. he had from like when he was a kid. So <laughs> and it's and it's Ted Raimi. I mean, come on. Right. It's wonderful. I like that guy. Um I do too, but I, that's kind of all there is to say. But like, 
-hmm. but this this also kicked off or started the trend of a non-musical show doing a musical episode and we kind of owe a lot to xena for trying that in the first place because it i can't imagine that that was an easy decision to make of like do yeah we, do we try that i mean granted syndicated show you have a little more flexibility yeah probably a little you gotta uh, fill little, those episodes yeah. baby put something in we gotta fill those episodes still, and like only the third season like we're not mm. that far into this show and we're like let's let's try this that's impressive yeah. It is a little ballsy to uh, to do that that drastic of a change to your show's format less than sixty episodes into your run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I gotta kind of give them a little bit of credit for that. Um, but because of that, we got you know some really good musicals. Not uh, they did more. They did I think one or two more musical episodes of Xena, but then your your Buffy's and uh, all of that type of stuff and shows that did it. So. We kind of we owe a lot to Xena for taking the first step for being the first one to to try it, which I think was cool. And again, I think this was really well done too. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah um, I will say I've come off in the last week had the itch. Me and my wife had the itch to watch Hamilton again, so we watched that. The boys have been singing The Greatest Showman in the car nonstop for weeks now, and between the two of those and then watching this, I was like. The music and stuff was not the thing that hung me up. The having no idea what was actually happening, <laughs> yeah, why yeah, yeah, is what yeah. hung me up. Uh -huh, but yeah, the music sure. stuff was so well done. And again, music done for a syndicated show for one episode, all of that produced, yeah, and done as well as they did. Bravo. Yeah, and to get you know half of them that were cast members doing the singing too. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, sure, they they've got that background, but like, it's still not easy to do that. And for them to do it on that kind of production schedule is pretty impressive. So yeah, I enjoyed that quite a bit. So now the question is, we'll start with Amy. Would you watch more Xeno Warrior Princess? Um, I mean, I probably would. That's pretty good. I mean, yeah, why not? I mean, it's Lucy Lawless. <laughs> She's terrific. Like, it's that's true. enough. You know what I mean? And then she backflipped off that horse. And apparently that's a thing I found out. She backflips off everything. So, you know, I mean, mm. I'm kind of in. Like, I could use a good, you know, I could use a good soap opera-y, action-y thing, you know. Yeah, There's it feels no more exactly. Game of Thrones. I need, you know, I need something. <laughs> yeah, it feels exactly like that. It's a, it's a soap opera type show. It's very melodramatic, but it's also like the perfect throw it on and do other stuff while it's playing and just kind of have you know, you can even half pay attention to it and still yeah. enjoy it. Stephen, how about you? Would you watch any more uh, Xena? If I had a handful of friends and a good bottle of spirits, uh, I could see myself <laughs> having having a good time with Xena. But uh, it's it's kind of outside my wheelhouse. Like I don't know that I'm in the the fan of the the mid budget fantasy genre does not really jive with the kind of things that I normally sit down and watch. Um, it's probably the reason we didn't watch it when I was a kid. It just was just outside the lines for me. Meanwhile, Walker, Texas Ranger was just right in the pocket. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that's, your, that's your mid budget crime procedural. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantasy it's, element out of it. Somehow had like, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think I would, it would take some, it would take some convincing for me to really just go. I would like to watch Xena today. Uh, but I yeah. did enjoy the episode. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed watching it. I just don't know that it's something I will revisit. That's perfectly fair. Yeah. Audie, how about you? Yeah, I think I'm in kind of the same boat as Steven. It's one of those things where, like, I've seen it. Okay, I'm good. Like, And it's one of those things where it's it's one of those shows where, like, I don't knock anybody who has watched it or will watch it or anything. Like, it it's good stuff. It's just not something I'm going to... It's with so much of this, it's just like I have so little time to watch mm -hmm. anything. This is just one of those where, like, I it's good, but I do not want to spend my time on this particular show. <laughs> That's all. I think, too, us coming to it at this point in our lives makes a big difference, too. Yeah, like, sure. And I can 100% see how, if you grew up, like, if you saw this when you were young, that you would latch onto it and it could become mm -hmm. that kind of comfort food type show of like, and 
you know, this was a show that came about. We, Stephen, you brought it up earlier, but we didn't have like a show with a strong woman lead like no. this for a right. long time. And literally and, strongly. Yeah, like physically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, so like that was a big thing for this show. And there's a lot of, um, uh, subtext to a lot of things with uh, with Zena and Gabrielle, especially in their relationship, oh, yeah. that um, got explored in this series that wasn't going on on television at the time. So yeah. that was also really cool, um, that, and and I'm that, glad that this exists. Yeah. And that whole thing continues to be embraced by the fans, and mm-hmm. both Lucy Lawless and Renee O'Connor have, with open arms, been like, "Yeah, go for it, take." take all the lessons in that direction that you want. We are here for you and with you and open to you. And it's just (laughs) like, it's really cool to see them as actresses be open to that and not, you know, shudder at it instead. They fully embrace it. Yeah. And, and it's a show I would throw on um, and have like when I'm working on a project or something and I need it, I don't have the connection to it that I have with something like, say, a Star Trek The Next Generation, which is another show I would do that with. But if this were an option, I'd throw it on there and I'd have it as something to watch because I think this is the perfect sort of that show. I've got a project to work on. I need something to keep me occupied. I don't feel like listening to any music right now. I'll throw on Xena and uh, and see what's going on there. So that's kind of how I feel about it, too. But I don't have that connection to it, so I'm not like rushing out to watch it either. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it a lot of fun. Now, we got feedback, right? We did. Oh, let me a couple places. Well, I'll awesome. go ahead and share one that I got. Yeah. One of my few first random encounter on uh, Blue Sky, the Blue Sky yeah. app. Uh, somebody responded to my artwork today and was like, so many things from my childhood that have been turned into musicals. I would love to see Xena get the treatment. She thought, uh, this is Kyla, Kyla Tilly, apparently singer-songwriter from Canada. She thought uh, we were talking about an actual musical, like full musical. Uh, um, oh. I was like, no, nah, it's just a musical episode of the TV series. The uh, a, a standalone full production type musical? Sadly, no. But... Also, um, thanks for the follow to Kyla Tilly, who followed our channel. Yeah. Yeah. So, awesome. Absolutely. So she was like, I had no idea they did a musical episode. They'll have, I'll have to track that down. So yeah. That'll be cool. Uh, we also got on uh, Twitter, Skeezix says, ah, yes. The joy <laughs> of a non-musical TV show finding a way to do a musical episode. I remember this episode of Xena. For some reason, Joxer the Mighty, Master of Geography, has been stuck in my head for 25 years. That's it. <laughs> Just those two short lines. I know there was a Hercules musical episode with the uh, Lylas actor in, uh, or I, Iolus uh, actor in drag as a character named Madam Twinkie, who was a dance instructor. Uh, mm. As a young teenager, Xena was a Saturday staple in my living room. She was a badass. She was a badass. She had a cute sidekick had no chill for stupid boys, plus <laughs> throw in the mythology, and I was hooked. I've enjoyed Musical March and can't wait to find out what the new theme is. Oh. Well, thank you, Skeezix. I got one feedback for you as well. I had told Smashy Ooh, that I... we were doing Xena, and she was like, ah! Well, I sent her Adi's art, for one thing, which is amazing. <laughs> the art was so good. It's so, so good. good. It delighted As soon as I thought me. of that, I was like, <laughs> was I was tickled. Was so perfect. So she sent me her typical text message, which begins with blah, ha, 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 ha. and she said, "I love that. I love that show so hard. It was the right amount of drama and camp." Uh, so that was her. Mm-hmm. She, she thought it was amazing. Excellent. Um, yeah, that's Xena Warrior Princess, uh, the musical episode, "The Bitter Sweet," um, closing out musical March, right. partway into April, and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That's fine. Uh, now we have a new category coming up, and uh, we're going to be doing a month worth of episodes on that. So, Audi, what are we doing, and where are you taking us? All right. So, um, we we even though we had a extra week off <laughs> planned, we didn't plan. We forgot to do a whole, you know, yeah. Poll we or said anything. we hey. Hey, we need to do a poll, and that's uh-huh. as far as we got. <laughs> yeah, we just, we just, we just picked one. 
awesome. Well, we just picked one out of the hat. It yeah, we was picked actually, one. I think the one that was like got one extra vote on the poll previously. So like technically sure. it was the, the next one. So we are going to start doing a series on the worst episodes of the best of TV. Yeah. And yeah. when I was looking for something, I was like, okay, I just started with the best. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, so yeah, we're just, yeah. We're just going to go for one of the goats. We're going to watch the Wonder Years. <gasps> oh, snap. Oh, Ooh. my yeah. goodness. Because uh, it yeah. it's easily accessible right now. It's on Hulu slash Disney Plus, what, wherever you're watching that stuff. And I went by the very scientific method of finding the lowest rated IMDb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is how I episode. intended to Perfect. do it. Yeah, that's so what that's, you, yep. yeah it's objectively So we're going to watch course. season five, episode seven, titled Soccer. Oh, okay. boy. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The yeah. Wonder Years. Oh, <sighs> so many thoughts. But I'm going to save them to next week. Save them. Yeah. Next week, that's what we're doing. Kicking mm -hmm. off the worst of the best. This is a fun. Which I'm going to say backwards 800 times. <laughs> sure, oh, sure, sure. Just, mm -hmm. It's fine. Yeah. I'm we best we know what we're actually it. talking about. <laughs> yes. The worst episode of the best TV. Ah, oh, can't wait. That'll oh, be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, if you if you enjoy this show and you're listening to us and you want to hear us live, you can do that Monday nights, 9 p.m. Uh, over at twitch.tv slash two dorks TV and uh, check us out on the live stream and, uh, and hang out in the chat with us. Um, you can do that. And then the show comes out during the week uh, anywhere you get your podcasts. And it's always got such amazing artwork by Audi. And mm. you really like nailed it. This this episode yeah. is one of my favorites. It's so good. So it's fun. That's to do. what's coming up. Uh, I can't wait to see what uh, the rest of us choose for our worst episodes mm -hmm. of Best TV. Um, it's going to be interesting. So keep an eye out and stay tuned for that. And also follow us on Twitter at uh, Those Days Show. You can email us, those were the days show at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, let us know what you think about the Wonder Years. And if you watched this specific episode, the episode Soccer, what did you think of that one? Uh, or do you have a favorite TV show that had a just god awful episode? <laughs> what was it? Tell us yeah, about. Yeah, please it. tell us. Yeah, we're, we're, we're very curious to know. <laughs> please let us know. And, um, just for curiosity's sake, and not at all, mm -hmm. because then I won't have to pick one. <laughs> pick one of yours. And uh, until until then, for Audie, for Stephen, for Amy, this is Travis saying uh, to. Watch your, uh, enjoy your classic TV and do a backflip off a horse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I hit the button and it didn't play. <laughs>discord very different this week so yeah, yeah. yeah it's probably weird. has to do with your your uh -huh. whatever changes oh, you've made. 